On this episode, I'm going to show you how to duck a background audio track to make space for a vocal track. This will be accomplished using the new Ducker Track Effect plugin introduced in DaVinci Resolve 19. This is especially useful for content creators who make tutorials with background music and video game enthusiasts who comment on video game reviews or gameplays. Let's begin. If you've used a sidechaining method within Track Dynamics, that option is still available, but the new Ducker Track Effect plugin is just as effective and offers a faster and simpler solution. To use this plugin, you will need at least two audio tracks set up. Here I added a vocal track to track 1 and a background track to track 2 and labeled them Vox and Background respectfully. The order of the tracks doesn't matter. With the two tracks ready, let's insert the plugin. For new installs of DaVinci Resolve, the track effects insert may not be visible on the mixer tracks. To add the new Ducker track effect, click on the three dots in the mixer window. Go down and hover over Visible Track Effects. There you will select the Ducker effect. The available effects differ between the free and studio versions of Resolve. But for our purposes, the Ducker plugin is available in the free version. Under the Track Input Insert, you will see that the Ducker plugin has been inserted in the track effects. By default, the plugin is disabled. Hover over it and click the dot to enable it. I suggest to leave the order of the signal chain in its default setting, where the effects is followed by the dynamics and then the EQ. Let's take a closer look at this plugin now. You can bring up the plugin by hovering over the insert and clicking the controls indicator to the right of the insert. You will be presented with the following UI or user interface. Duck source is where you select the track signal the Ducker plugin listens and responds to. In this case, it would be a voiceover track. Duck level is the amount of attenuation applied to the current track. In this case, it would be applying a negative 10 decibel attenuation or lowering a volume to the current background track. This value will depend on what sounds best to you. For most situations, a decibel difference between negative 10 to negative 20 decibels is suitable for vocal tracks against background tracks. My heart a flutter with into My heart a flutter. The maximum ducking this plugin offers is negative 18 decibels, which is more than sufficient. Look ahead causes the ducker to listen to signal changes in the vocal track a few moments before it reacts. This causes the effect to react to level changes earlier. This can be useful for achieving smoother and more natural ducking. For example, a setting of 250 milliseconds or a quarter of a second causes the ducker to look ahead for signal changes which can mitigate volume shifts between words and transient sounds. Delicate pirouette and graceful. With every delicate pirouette and graceful air. Rise time is the amount of time it takes for the attenuation to reach the level you specified with the duck level knob. This creates a gradual attenuation change. In other words, a gradual lowering of the volume before the vocal track audio comes in. At zero, the attenuation is abrupt. At the maximum setting, the attenuation is gradual and natural. My heart a flood. My heart a flood. Hold keeps the volume attenuated before restoring it up to one second after the vocal track silences. This is useful for keeping the attenuation constant during momentary pauses inherent to the elocution in one's diction, in other words, the way you speak. In the sanctuary of my imagination, I be the sanctuary of my imagination, I become the embodiment of grace. Recovery is just like rise time, but for restoring the volume of the background track. At zero seconds, the volume abruptly increases when the vocal track produces no sound. At the maximum setting, the volume gradually comes in. 
This function is useful for gradually restoring the volume at the end of a phrase where inflections in your voice could register a silence, thus triggering the ducker to restore the background track early. In other words, the ducker may prematurely begin to restore the background track due to the natural drop of volume and timbre in your voice at the end of a sentence. Become the embodiment of grace. Become the embodiment of grace. Become the embodiment of grace. At the top of the plugin UI, you have an A-B comparison for testing two different settings. The arrow copies the highlighted setting over to either the A or B instance. To the left, you have a plus sign, which allows you to save the current state of the plugin as a preset or update it. Let's apply what we know to the following example. The voiceover audio has been processed with leveling and gating. I'll talk about leveling and gating later, but for now I want to demonstrate the plugin in action. By the way, it goes without saying, but make sure to edit out clicks and other noises on your vocal track. Let me start by setting the duck level. I would suggest setting up a loop like I am. You can learn about looping audio in my How to Automate Audio video. Also, I'm choosing to loop a section where the background audio is the loudest. With every delicate pirouette and graceful arabesque, I transcend reality, soaring on the wings of my dreams to the spotlight of the grand stage. My heart a Now I'll adjust the rise and recovery. My heart. My heart a flutter with My heart a flutter with anticipation my dreams to the spotlight of the grand stage Spotlight of the grand stage to the spotlight of the grand stage Next, I'll adjust the hold to polish the ends of the sentences and the abrupt changes in volume between words. My heart, a flutter with anticipation, yearns to leap into the ethereal realm where the music of my soul orchestrates. Flutter with anticipation, yearns to leap into the ethereal realm where the music of my soul orchestrates the dance of my a flutter with anticipation yearns to leap into the ethereal realm where the music of my soul orchestrates lastly i'll set the look ahead to further smooth out the ducking yearns to leap into the ethereal realm where the music of my soul orchestrates the dance of my destiny a flutter with anticipation yearns to leap into the ethereal realm where the music of my soul orchestrates the With every delicate pirouette and graceful arabesque, I transcend reality, soaring on the wings of my dreams to the spotlight of the grand stage. My heart, a flutter with anticipation, yearns to leap into the ethereal realm where the music of my soul orchestrates the dance of my destiny. Feel free to copy these settings as a starting point for your workflow by saving it as a preset. After dialing in the global settings for the loop section you worked on, listen to the entire audio performance, checking for spots in your audio where the plugin fails, specifically in the pauses between words where the background audio pokes in. Without changing the global settings, we want to point out and smooth out those spots directly. We can locate and tag those spots with markers by pressing M on your keyboard or clicking the marker icon here. Let's examine this example where the pacing of the voiceover causes the Ducker plugin to respond to the silence between words and brings in the background audio, distracting the listener. In the sanctuary of my imagination, I become the embodiment of grace. Notice at this point, 
the doctor lets the background audio through. But we want the audio ducked throughout the slight moment of silence. Usually turning up the look-ahead fixes this. However, you may not want the look-ahead value too high throughout the entire track because it can cause the ducker to engage too soon. This can result in longer gaps of lower volume before the voiceover comes in. Increasing the hold value can be an option in some cases. However, setting the hold value too high will hold a ducking longer after the end of phrases before the recovery begins. Instead, you may only need a higher look-ahead value for small sections of the audio, like the one we're addressing. To accomplish this, we can automate the plugin's look-ahead feature. Toggle automation to on here. A drop-down menu appears on the tracks. Select plugins, docker, then look-ahead. You'll notice an automation line appears on the track over the waveform. Expand the audio of the voiceover track and background track by dragging the height of each track individually. Alternatively, you can select both tracks and drag the height of one of them down, or using shortcut keys, holding the shift button while scrolling the mouse wheel up or down. If you're interested in essential shortcut keys for working faster, check out my episode on that. Open the Docker plugin if it isn't open already, and place it so it's visible and mostly out of the way but not covering the automation lane of the background track and the waveform of the vocal track. If you need more room on your screen, you can hide the meters by navigating on the menu bar to Workspace, Show Panel in Workspace, and deselecting meters. You can repeat the process to bring the meters back, as you will need the LUFS metering when mastering your audio. Now let's move the playhead back a few seconds and play the audio again. Observe the yellow line in the Ducker plugin indicating the act of ducking. In the sanctuary of my imagination. There. Notice at what point the volume changes between words. We want to create automation points around the silent gap between the words where the volume in the Ducker changed like this. To make an automation point, alt click or option click the automation line. To remove a point, control alt click or command option click a point. Make sure the automation points contain the end of the last word and the beginning of the next word by dragging the points accordingly. I recommend making the shape of a box. Drag this part of the line up, which increases the lookup time of the ducker. How much you raise it depends on the length of the pause. In some cases, it may be better to just shift the word closer together or farther apart. Okay, let's see how this change sounds. Let's put the playhead back a few seconds and listen to the audio. In the sanctuary of my imagination, I become the embodiment. In the sanctuary of my imagination, In the sanctuary of my imagination, I become the... That sounds better. As a side note, once automation has been added, you won't be able to adjust the look-ahead knob because the automation overrides its function. If you want to change your previous static look-ahead setting, you will need to change the constant value around the look-ahead automation you added. In case you find that look-ahead doesn't resolve your issue, or you have a very dynamic vocal track, from the drop-down menu on the track, try automating the hold as well as other parameters. Don't get overwhelmed. Practice automating one parameter first, then try automating a second. I know this can be overwhelming for first-timers using NLEs and DAWs for the first time, but all that I'm showing you quickly becomes second nature after utilizing these features in your first project. Let me take a second to offer you a workflow summary. You'll want to find global settings that work for a small portion of your project as quickly as possible, which will be a starting point for the entire project. With the plugin in place, start with a duck level of about negative 10 decibels and adjust to taste. Next, pay attention to the start of your phrases and adjust the rise parameter. Similarly, listen to the end of your phrases and adjust the recovery. Next, listen for volume spikes within the sentence and increase the hold parameter to smooth out the volume spikes between words. 
If the spikes don't entirely go away, set a low look ahead to smooth out the spikes a little more. With those initial settings, listen to the entire project while adding markers to spots that need attention, and don't worry about micro changes while you do this. When you're done listening, go back and use automation to correct issue spots accordingly. I think you can take it from here. So far you have enough to get you started, but you will need to experiment with the controls to find the settings that sound best to you. I'd like to offer some advice. It helps to have a vocal track that has strong and consistent audio levels. I have a video showing you how to automate and level audio for this very purpose. Furthermore, the Ducker plugin functions more effectively with silence between phrases. This can be accomplished with a gating plugin. Using a gate improves the effectiveness of the Ducker plugin by silencing the quiet parts of the vocal track, thereby eliminating quiet breaths and mouth noises, which can unwantedly trigger the Ducker. This will produce a more polished and professional sounding voiceover. Resolve offers a gate in the dynamic section, or for those of you wanting more control, Sonable's SmartGate uses AI to intelligently and automatically set up a gate for a voiceover. There's a link to the SmartGate plugin in the description. You may also want to consider EQing the background track so your voice is not competing with frequencies even after the ducking has occurred. For example, certain voices are deeper than others. If your vocal track has a lot of lower frequency content, which may compete with sound effects like in video game reviews, you may want to slightly EQ the lows a little, like in this example. On the other hand, if your voice is a bit brighter and feels that it competes with higher frequency content like music, even after ducking, then you may consider EQing the higher frequency content of the background track slightly. This keeps the listener focused on you and not higher frequencies of the background track, like in this example. Alternatively, if your background track is spectrally balanced, but you want to make your voice pop out even more when the docker is active, you may want to consider attenuating the mid-range of the background track only a few decibels with a low or wide Q factor. To summarize, I introduced the new docker plugin which ducks the background audio to make room for your vocal track. I explained the controls of the plugin and gave you some general settings that will get you up and running quickly. I also provided some tips to improve the effectiveness of the plugin by using audio leveling and a gate on your vocal track. So as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, go capture that once-in-a-lifetime moment.